Yo, welcome back to another video with Yaboy. Yeah Today we're going to be looking at the two new plugins that FL Studio 21 um, brought with the new beta update. I did cover them like slightly in my previous video, explaining a couple of changes with uh, the new beta updates, but they are Luxverb and Multiband Delay. It's a new reverb plugin and a new delay plugin. I've played around with it a bit this week now since I made the last video. It's really dope. It's uh, definitely something new at least. It's not a, you know, rebrand of an old plugin. It's actually a bit more like um, innovative and definitely a step into the right direction when it comes to stock plugins with FL, I feel. But yeah, before we get into the video, be sure to check out the description, check out all the boys in the label, check out the Discord, the Twitch, as usual, you know, check out the website. As always, we still have a bunch of free kits on our website. There's a bunch of new kits dropping as well soon. I know Jake's been going crazy, so there's always new content on there. But yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting off, I just took this uh, guitar loop from Cymatics, so I'll just play it through for you guys as a dry loop so that you guys can kind of hear the difference between the dry loop and the process loop. So starting off, we have the new delay plugin called Multiband Delay, and um, it's definitely a different take on a delay. There's one main feature that is really interesting to me. As you can see, there's a full spectrum of audio that you can tweak around with. So I can add a specific amount of delay to a specific frequency in my mix, and uh, it'll affect it accordingly. And there's also a bunch of parameters to play around with. Another cool thing is this actually goes over to a volume tab and a panning tab as well. So same thing applies. You have a full spectrum of audio and you can tweak around with as much as you want so by default you have this uh, graph over here that's kind of just like a steep upward graph but you have full control of the entire graph if you just click and drag on it and right now as you can see i'm moving it around and it's kind of making a curve and staying at that curve and at the bottom left you have settings to actually tweak around with it so the first one would obviously give me a curve wherever i drag my cursor around and the one next to that will give me a line. So you can kind of get a more accurate gradual slope to your graph. And the last one is kind of where you have the most control, I feel. So you can actually change around a specific band only and not affect the other bands. Another feature that's pretty handy when it comes to changing parameters of this plugin is you can click on this top gray bar and it'll actually mute that band. And once you click it again, it'll lock that band. So whatever you draw on top of the graph, that band won't be affected by it. Another cool thing you can do is click on this drop down menu over here and actually select random curve and it'll give you a random curve which is pretty cool to experiment with especially if you don't really know the plugin as well i think it could be fun just to you know cycle through a couple of those and just hear what sounds cool you know another thing this drop down menu can do is reset the curve so if you ever feel you've done a bit too much or you don't really know where you are and you just kind of want to restart you can easily just select reset on this drop down menu so starting off with the parameters you have a scale knob which is kind of like a time knob and other delays so obviously the more you bring it up the more heavy the delay is going to be and um the longer it takes for the delay to actually come back and next to that you have a feedback knob which is basically the intensity of the delay so the more you turn it up the more prominent the delay will be And as you can hear, as I play around with the scale knob, as I play the actual loop, it kind of has this time warping effect, which is actually pretty cool to automate, I feel. And you can also just right click on any parameter to create an automation clip. And moving on next to that, you have a smoothing time knob, which basically does what it says. Kind of just makes the delay sound a bit more smoother. So the actual feedback of the delay won't be as chopped up. It will kind of just flow into each other. And um, it depends what sound you really want to go for uh, with your delay, but you can kind of tweak around with any of these to get the sound you want. And next to that, you have a morph knob, which to my understanding, it kind of finds a gap between your band and the morph band. And it kind of plays around with that gap in the frequency. So 
so yeah really cool you can get some spaced out like travis scott effect with it um if you put it on a loop i think it's dope for intros and outros as well um or even just like a little switch up section in a beat and like i said you can automate any of these knobs so you can really go crazy with these different effects and um yeah it's just different to any other delay that we have uh from fl studio so like i've said i've tested it on a bunch of loops it's it's been fire on everything a few other things you can tweak up is obviously like a mix knob which is like your wet and dry knob you also have three different modes that you can play around with over here and like i said at the start you can also go to the volume tab and the pan tab to really get experimental with your delay And lastly, you can go to this preset menu and there's around like 15 presets that you can play around with. And when I started using the plugin as well, I kind of used these presets to start my delay off. And then, you know, I kind of learned from that how to use the plugin. So I definitely advise going through these presets and then um, kind of adapting it to your sound. And moving on to Luxverb, which is FL Studio's new reverb. I haven't played around with this plugin too much, but just going through the presets alone, it has such a different sound to any other reverb I've ever used. Just for an example, this waterfall block awesome um, on the preset menu just does something to the loop it kind of detunes the reverb on it and it just adds texture to the whole loop <laughs> So starting off we have a input section and an output section for your reverb and the input section has a wet gain that you can play around with and then a high and low cut filter next to that you have the decay knob which is basically the intensity of your reverb so the more you turn it up the bigger the reverb will sound and it'll make the reverb sound just a lot wetter as well Next to that, you have a bunch of different parameters you can play around with. And like I said, you can just right click on anything to create an automation clip, which is really fun to play around with. I've done that a lot with these two plugins. And starting off, you have a brightness knob, which basically tweaks up the high end of the reverb a bit and just makes it a bit brighter. Next to that, you have a size knob, which I'm pretty sure everyone has seen on other delays, but it'll kind of just make the reverb sound a bit more bigger and open. And next to that, you have a diffusion knob, which also just adds to how big your reverb sounds. And then you also have a character knob, a pre-delay, a amp modifier, and a frequency modifier knob. Next to that, you can also choose between normal delay, freeze delay that kind of catches the first note of the loop and then just uses that as the reverb for the rest of the time. And then sustain mode, which kind of just is too much reverb to be fair, but um, you can use it in the background as texture. Next to that, you have a feedback section for your delay. So it can work as reverb and feedback. It's obviously not as in detail as the multiband delay or any other delay, but it's enough to just add a little bit of feedback to your reverb. Here you also have a high cut and a low cut knob. You have a delay knob, a reverb mix knob, and a gain and pitch shift knob. And if you want to enable or disable any of these tabs, you can just click on this light here at the top right. And as you can hear with the pitch shift knob, it is really cool to play around with it and kind of add a whole different sound. It just adds a completely different element to it. Um, kind of just fills up the entire loop. I don't know how to explain it, but I really fuck with this new feature. And then next to that, you have an output knob. And below that, you have a normal envelope menu. And you also have a graph next to that. But yeah, that is about it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something new. Once again, check out the description for all the boys for our Discord, our website. And yeah, stay tuned for our new FL Studio 21 content i'm really excited to cover everything and anything related to this um it's really exciting seeing the software that i've used for so long kind of adapting new features and just software from other doors so yeah really excited i uh, hope you guys enjoyed once again and i'll check you guys in the next one